taste and see that the Lord is good. Good morning. Welcome to Morning Cup of Jesus. I'm your host, Minister Edward Broom. Without further ado, we'll get right into it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, for putting us to sleep last night, God. Thank you, Lord, for waking us up this morning. Thank you, God, for giving us a, a mission and a task and a purpose, Lord God. If you didn't have a purpose for us, God, if you didn't have if you didn't have anything for us to do, Lord God, you would have taken us in the midst of our sleep, Lord. You wouldn't allow us to see another day. God, we thank you for that. <clears throat> God, help us to fulfill the purpose that you have for us. Help us to God to um to 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 prosper in whatever you desire, Lord, whatever you sent us to do, Lord God. Help us to do your will, Father. Right now I pray for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, Lord. As we get into your word this morning, Lord, have your way. Move me out the way, Lord. Have your way. None of me, all of you, God. Have your way, Lord. Let your will be done. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right, all right, all right. Um, <clears throat> scripture coming from um, John. All and those who attended Bible study last night got something for you. There is only one spirit. Let that soak in. There's only one spirit. But it was, uh, this scripture was mentioned last night. And uh, so we're going to John chapter 8, verses 1 through 11. <clears throat> but Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. Now, early in the morning, he came again into the temple and all the people came to him. And he sat down and taught them. Then the scribes and Pharisees brought to him a woman called in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in adultery, in the very act. Now Moses, in the law, commanded us that such should be stoned. But what do you say, Jesus? This they said to him, testing him, that, he, that they might have something 
of which to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and wrote on the ground with his finger as though he did not hear them. So when they continued asking him, he raised himself up and said to them, whoever is without sin among you, let him throw a stone at her first. And again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. Then those who heard it being convicted by their conscience went out one by one, beginning with the oldest, even to the, the last. And Jesus was left alone and the woman was standing in the midst. When Jesus had raised himself up and saw no one but the woman, he said to her, Woman, where are those accusers of yours? Has no one condemned you? <clears throat> she said, No one, Lord. And Jesus said to her, Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. God bless the readers, the hearers, and the doers of his word. <laughs> <clears throat> it doesn't matter what you did or what you used to do. What matters is what you do now. None of us deserve <clears throat> God's goodness. Uh, all of us have seen and fall short of God's glory. None of us deserve his goodness. Uh, even the people who live a so-called good life can't say that they are good enough that they have earned their salvation into eternal life. They have earned uh, 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 each everlasting life in paradise with the Father. There, there's no such thing. Sin disqualifies you. From the moment you're born, you're born into sin. So, and, and nobody can say they never sinned. So, it ain't got, you can't even blame it on Adam's sinful nature and say, well, because Adam's sinful nature, because I ain't never sinned, it's just Adam. You're a lie. You've sinned. Everybody has sinned. If you think that you haven't sinned, if you say that you have no sin, you are deceiving yourself and the truth is not in you. But if you confess your sin, God is faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you of all unrighteousness. <clears throat> we are saved by grace through the faith that God has given us. However, if we are saved, our behavior shows it. Our behavior shows that we are saved. And if we are not saved, our behavior shows that as well. People who are saved and filled with the Holy Spirit of the Lord Jesus, they repent. We repent when we sin. They are sorry for doing and saying things contrary to the word of God. And they aim to stop doing and saying those things. In fact, as the scripture said, Jesus told the woman to leave and stop sinning. He said, I don't condemn you for what you've done. Go and stop doing it. <laughs> Go, and he, he said, go and stop committing that sin. He said, go and sin no more. But you can say he referring to all sin or he referring to that sin. But once you get caught up in your sin, it ain't, ain't got to be by people. Once your heart convicts you of your sin, if you're living in the Lord Jesus, if you're saved, you're not going to want to do that sin anymore. You're going to try to avoid that sin. You're going to take routes to, to stop sinning. And, uh, and we can't do it alone. We have to have the Holy Spirit to help us do that, but you got to first want to do it. If you don't want to stop sinning, you're not going to stop sinning. If you think something is not a sin that you're doing, you're not going to stop doing it because you don't want to stop doing it. That's the bottom line right there. Um, if we think that we can sin freely, not obey the Lord, and still be saved, we are deceived. If you think that... uh uh, uh as Paul said, he said, should we sin more? Should we continue in sin so that grace may abound more? He, he's saying, should we should we continue to commit more and more sins just so God will show us more and more of his grace, more, of him, more and more of his forgiveness? Certainly not. Paul said, certainly not. If it was, back, if it was in the modern day, he'll say, H now. He'll, he'll tell you now. He'll use the word hell in front of him and tell you no. That we are saved because it, because it, it's, it's irrational to think that just because our our God is forgiving and He has forgiven us that we should continue sinning so that He keeps showing us more and more forgiveness. It's not rational. That's show, that's a, to me that's a sign of showing if you're saved or not. If you think that you are, if you think that you're gonna, uh, uh, if you think that you want to continue living the life of sin, how can you say that you belong to Jesus Christ? 
There is no sin in him. There's no sin in Jesus Christ. Uh, 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 if you if you think that uh, if you think that because you confess Jesus once, that 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 uh, that that uh, cleanses away everything you ever do, you're mistaken. Why do we have the Bible then? If that's the case, the Bible could just say confess Jesus, and then you that's it for the rest of your life. You're done. That's not true. Don't let nobody trick you. There is no um. There, they, they say the sinner's prayer, and I don't get into that right there, you know, all the debate about whether or not the sinner's prayer. But a lot of people who quote the sinner's prayer up at the front of the, of the altar, and, or, you know what I'm saying, the end of church or whatever, those people, uh, they just saying it. <clears throat> it's not about, it's not about what you say. It's about your heart. See, um, you can say I'm sorry and don't be sorry. You can tell somebody, oh, I'm sorry. And don't and don't nearby be sorry. I don't have one bit of uh, remorse for what you did or anything like that. You you really can. So what you say is not. I mean, then it could be based on <clears throat> the music or or how you're feeling at the time. So it can't be based on a, a one time uh, a, a one time event that took place or one time uh, event that you that you came that you say you came to the Lord and now and now that makes you say. Uh, the, uh, Christianity, this life with Jesus Christ is a lifestyle. It's not a one-time thing. It's uh, you don't, you don't, you don't take the Christianity test. You don't take the test, the Jesus test, and pass it. You have to live the test. Christianity is not a one-time test. And I pass it, I'm going to heaven. It's a, it's a lifestyle. And um, if people uh, if we, if people think that they can do whatever they want to do, and uh, and and and, and and, and don't repent for their sins, they're mistaken. If people think that, well, Jesus didn't just die for their sin because they repent. Jesus died for all of our sins, whether we repent or not. They are mistaken. Um, if we think that we don't need to repent and be forgiven by Jesus, we are not saved. Anybody who thinks they don't have to repent, anybody who thinks they don't need to have their sins forgiven by Je through Jesus Christ only, those people are not saved right now. Now, with God, once saved, I always say, when God saves you, you are saved. The word says, none of them, you can't, uh, the enemy won't take any of them out of my hand. Let me uh, take close this other page so my thing will stop skipping here. <clears throat> Jesus says, uh, those you have placed in my hand, they're not going to be taken away from you. So if you're in Jesus' hands, if you're saved, you're already you're saved forever. But the thing is, some people say they saved. Some people say they're with Jesus, but they're really not saved. And they're really not with Jesus Christ. You know what I'm saying? Our behavior shows we saved or not. Ain't no way you're going to say um, you all, you all in for Jesus Christ, but, but all your actions, all your words, everything you do, it, 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 it shows that the enemy is that, that John chapter eight verse four says, "You are of your father. Your works, your your you do what your father, the devil, tell you to do. If everything you do is contrary to what Jesus says, I can't put it no better way. But that's the truth. You know what I'm saying? Uh, if we think that we have not sinned, we are deceived. And as I said, you think that you can sin freely and, and not obey the Lord." And still be saved, you are deceived. There's no such thing as that. You know, there's no such thing as a. Uh, I said I love Jesus one time. And another thing, if you say you love somebody, you ain't gonna hurt them. I mean, they that's that funny love. That's that they call it funny money. It ain't real money. That's that funny love. It ain't that. It ain't real love. It's just something that you're saying. Imagine somebody that you love for real. Whether it's a sibling, whether it's your sister or your brother. Your mama, your dad, your grandmama, auntie, cousin, uncle, niece, nephew, son, daughter, husband, wife, no matter who it is. Imagine somebody that you truly do love. Now imagine you uh seeing them sitting there just being being sweet, looking look look at how they look when you look at them. When they when you you know you look at somebody that you love and you just smile and they don't know what you're smiling. You're just smiling because you love them. And you just look, you just you look at them and you and you love them. But um Imagine that person sitting there, and instead of you, 
and you do you give that little smile because you love them. But all of a sudden, you take something and start hurting them with it, or you or you do something to hurt them physically. And then why did you get through doing it? And they they crying or looking at you crazy or looking upside your head, and and you say, "I'm doing it because I love you." Don't make sense. And with the children, scripture tell you to whoop they butt because if you love them, stop them from going to hell. And with Proverbs just to say, go read the book of Proverbs. Uh, go read. I tell you, we might talk about that another time. But the script, but I'm talking about somebody you love and you doing something to them to hurt them, not to teach them a lesson like a child or, or chastise them or discipline them like a child. But say so you do something to hurt them, and then you say, "I love you. I'm sorry." And you turn around and do it again later on that day. Turn around and do it again later on. How can you say you really love that person? And if you intentionally do it, and 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 then say that you and think that you love that person and not even tell and then you tell the person you love them don't mean anything your actions are showing otherwise so as i say it don't matter what you did it don't matter how long ago you did it it don't matter how bad it was no sins that you can commit no sins that you can commit are unforgivable except for the sin of not even believing at all in the power of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. There's no way you can believe that there is no Holy Spirit and there's no God and, and there's no, um, there, and you can't be raised back to life and then expect to be raised back to life. You got to have a change of heart. You have a change of heart. Now that's done, but if you live that, if that's how you, you go to the grave with that sin, I I feel for you. So any other sins, you can take them to the grave, which Jesus Christ forgive you for them after you have Jesus Christ in your heart. Don't matter what you did or what you used to do. What matters is what you do now. Now you got to make a decision on if you want to continue living in sin, continue deceiving yourself like it's not sin, or continue pretending like you like you love the Lord. At the same time, you're doing things to hurt Him, and you're not remorseful for it. Or you can surrender to God. You can submit to God. You tell Him, Lord, man, I'm sorry. I, I, I I got a sinful nature. God changed me. I don't want to live like this anymore. I don't want to live a life full of sin. I don't want to live doing any sins, God. Change me. Make me into who you want me to be. Mold me, God. Teach me. Show me how. Convict me, God. Rebuke me, God. Convince me. Chastise me, God, until I'm who you want me to be and until I'm made into the person that you that you, that you you created me to do before the foundation of the world. Thank you, Lord, for your word this morning. God, work all things together for our good. And God, show us, Lord. Show us, God. Our, our, show us, God, our purpose for this life, Lord God. Show us the reason that you created us, Lord God. And help us to walk in that purpose, Lord God. Help us to fulfill the the destiny that you have for us, God, that you have for us, Lord God. Not that people say, not that we read, not that we think, but Lord, show us the truth. God, I pray for revelation for everyone who listening and watching this morning and those who are listening and watching at another time. I pray for revelation, God. I pray you would show them, God, your will, and I pray, God, that you would strengthen them and encourage them and compel them to do your will, Father. Not our will, God, but let your will be done. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. That's another episode of Morning Cup of Jesus with Minister Edward Broom, me, your host. Uh, if the Lord is willing, we'll be right back here. Same time tomorrow. Trying to see. Good morning, Miss Bill. I see her on there, too. I can see you on there. Good morning. Uh, same, same time tomorrow, if the Lord is willing. 6.45 a.m. Oh, taste and see. That the Lord is good. Thank you.
the bed.